Have you ever been wrong? Have you ever thought that your thinking was rock solid only to find out later that it was flawed? If you're anything like me, then the answer is no. I've never been wrong in my life, so I really can't relate to these questions. Now, of course, I'm kidding. I'm wrong all the time, and that's just part of life. Oftentimes, when we are wrong, that's when we learn the most. Now, today on the Mr. Sin channel, we are going to be practicing a little metacognition, which is an awareness of one's own cognitive process. Essentially, we are going to think about how we think. We are going to be going into Unit 5, Topic 8 of AP Psychology, Biases and Errors in Thinking. Throughout our lives, we are confronted with different problems, situations, and events. And when we approach these different problems in life, we use different informal and formal reasoning. This allows us to handle complex problems quickly and efficiently. But sometimes this can lead to errors in our thinking. For example, heuristics allow us to make mental shortcuts that can help us quickly process information. Remember, this is part of our informal thinking. In our last video, I gave the example that if you lose your phone in your house, House, you might try to retrace your steps to reduce the areas in your home that you need to search for for your phone. This is an example of heuristics, which allows us to make quick judgments and quickly try to solve a problem. We can see that heuristics can be great to help us quickly answer a question or solve a problem, but it can also cause us to come to the wrong answer and can lead to a cognitive bias to form in our thinking. A cognitive bias is an error in thinking that happens when the brain tries to simplify different information we are processing. This often happens because of the thinking strategy we are utilizing. For example, with trying to find the phone, you might eliminate the place that the phone actually could be. As you're trying to retrace your steps, you ignore certain areas of your home. Now, I do want to mention that when it comes to heuristics, you want to be familiar with representativeness heuristics and availability heuristics. Both can cause you to have errors in your thinking. Representativeness heuristics occurs when we come across information that we're not really that familiar with. We have not developed a schema for this information to fit into, so we try to match our item up or information with an existing prototype that we have. This will often cause us to ignore certain parts of the information and have us rely on stereotypes to match the information into a schema that does not really fit the item or information. For example, if you see someone who's really tall, you might automatically think they play basketball. When trying to remember representativeness heuristics, just think of stereotyping. Availability heuristics occurs when we use the information that is accessible to us right away. We base our thinking on the availability of the information in our memory. Information that comes quickly to us or information that's more common, we begin to think is correct. For example, if you're ever taking a test and right away the answer pops into your head, that's availability heuristics. Instead of thinking through the question, question and the other options, you right away just go with what you first thought of. That's why it's important to always break down questions, especially on an AP class. Now, it's not just heuristics that cause us to have bias and errors in our thinking. We can also look at concepts such as hindsight bias, which is the tendency to think that one could have anticipated the outcome of an event or an experiment after it had already occurred. Essentially, hindsight bias is the tendency to think that the information is less surprising once you know it. This type of bias happens because once our brain learns something, we start to make connections to all the other information that we know, and we start to see patterns. Remember, hindsight is always 20-20. There is also confirmation bias, which is when we seek information that aligns with our point of view, and we dismiss information that challenges our beliefs. For example, let's say you're driving in the car with your friend, and you drive by an accident on the side of the road. You look out the passenger window, and you notice that it was two men who were involved in the accident. Your friend who is driving looks over as well, but does not say anything, and keeps driving. Later in the road trip, you come across another accident. This this time, the accident is between a woman and a man. Right away, your friend looks over and says, look, more evidence that women can't drive. Notice in this example that nothing was said about the information that challenged the stereotype that women are not as good of drivers as men. However, when your friend saw the accident that supported the stereotype in their worldview, they accepted it. This is an example of confirmation bias. There's also anchoring bias. Remember in our last video when I talked about how we use anchors to try and come to a reasonable answer? I asked you what age Abraham Lincoln was when he died, and whether Abraham Lincoln died before he was the age of 10 or before the age of 150. Both these anchors were wrong, and they would skew your answer in certain directions. If when trying to figure out how old Abraham Lincoln was when he died, I only gave you the anchor of 10 years old, it would skew your answers to the younger side. Now, you probably know that Abraham Lincoln didn't die when he was 10 years old, but if that was the only reference point you had, that would skew your reasoning and thought process. You'd have thought that he must have died at a younger age since I gave you a younger anchor. Speaking of how information is presented to us, sometimes we can have errors in our thinking because of framing. This is when information is presented to us in a way that impacts our opinions, thoughts, or decisions on a particular topic. It's often used to try and guide people to a certain conclusion on a particular topic without them even realizing it. They're being influenced without their knowledge. For example, have you ever heard of the Affordable Care Act or maybe Obamacare? They are the same thing, but many people did not know 
know that. CNN did a poll that found that 46% of the people they polled were opposed to Obamacare, but only 37% were opposed to the Affordable Care Act. And 30% of the people they polled didn't even know what the Affordable Care Act was. The term Obamacare was used to try and push people against the Affordable Care Act. Or we could look at the 1992 Lewis Harris poll, which found that 70% of the people they polled said they favored affirmative action, but only 46% favored racial preference programs. That poll was done because certain shows were calling affirmative action racial preference programs to skew the audience against affirmative action. Both of these are examples of framing. When certain words are used, it can lead us to have certain biases against certain information. This can also happen if certain information is left out. For example, certain news outlets might want to push a certain agenda, and they'll only focus on information that supports their perspective. This skews the coverage and frames the information in a way that promotes their agenda, leading the audience to have a skewed opinion on the topic at hand. Now, when we get a particular viewpoint set in our mind, it can be sometimes difficult to change it. This is known as fixedness, which is when we are not able to see a problem, information, or a topic from a different point of view. This can lead to belief perseverance, which is when even when we are confronted or presented with information that contradicts our thoughts, we still cling to our original belief. For example, have you ever been in a discussion with someone about politics, and even though you presented them with multiple facts, statistics, and different examples to illustrate your point, the other person just refuses to change their mind, or possibly even acknowledge the facts you presented. This would be an example of belief perseverance. Two other concepts that I also want to highlight that cause us to have errors in our thinking are illusory correlation and functional fixedness. Illusory correlation is when different events or items happen near each other, and we instinctively think there must be a connection. Remember from our Unit 1 videos, correlation does not equal causation. Functional fixedness, on the other hand, is when we see certain items or objects in only a specific way. For example, a coin can be used to purchase items, but I could also use it to scrape gum off the bottom of a desk. When we fixate on one use for an item, we often miss alternative solutions that could be more effective than traditional ways of thinking. So there you have it. There's just a couple different ways in which we can be led astray and have errors in our thinking. Now comes the time to practice. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section below. Also, if you're finding value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review packet. It's got resources on everything for this class and it'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.